I'm Adrian, and today we're taking an in-depth look at Marcus's fighting style in Soul Hunters. What you're about to see is a very special episode of How Many Fighting Styles, as this video stars Marcus, the main character in the first feature film that my brother and I wrote and directed, Soul Hunters. You will get a behind-the-scenes, in-depth look at what went into creating his fighting style for the film. I highly recommend watching the film before seeing this video. It's available on Amazon and at our official website, soulhuntersmovie.com. If you'd like to see it, just click the link in the description below. That being said, there won't be any spoilers in this analysis. The goal of these videos is to figure out just how many fighting styles our combatant is familiar with. There is a huge amount of crossover in martial arts techniques, and a technique that is present in one fighting style may also be present in another, such as a roundhouse kick being present in multiple martial arts. But in order to not give combatants multiple fighting styles for the sake of variety, I have instead opted to list the most apt fighting style that best represents that particular technique or set of techniques. Without further ado, let's take a look at how many fighting styles Marcus knows in Soul Hunters. One of the most important things in choreographing good action is playing to the actor's strengths. If an actor already has a background in a certain martial art, it's best to give him or her choreography that complements those skills. It's why Tony Jaa's choreography frequently includes Muay Thai, or why Iko Weiss will include Salat. These martial artists have a strong background in said martial arts. Zack Schreier has been training in Taekwondo since he was 5 years old and is currently a black belt. Since his instructor was also well versed in boxing, he picked up a lot of boxing technique as well. Growing up, he was in wrestling teams and trained in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu while he was in college and even fought semi-pro MMA for a year and has continued to train in martial arts since then. Diana Page, the stunt coordinator and fight choreographer of the film, has been training for over a decade in Shotokan Karate, has achieved her black belt and has been working in the stunts division within the film industry for 7 years. She's also trained in Krav Maga and that has helped her develop any and all choreography involving guns, like the short fight that Eli has against two armed soldiers. My personal martial arts background lies primarily with my black belt in Taekwondo, and I have training in other martial arts including Jiu Jitsu, Krav Maga, Wing Chun, and Boxing. If you'd like a more complete breakdown of my personal experience in martial arts, you're welcome to watch the full video available on the Fighting Styles playlist. Diana had the task to focus Zack's talent to fit the character of Marcus. Given Zack's large frame, she didn't want to include too much Taekwondo in the film and go for a more grounded style of fighting, relying on his wrestling and Jiu Jitsu skills. I agreed, as this worked well in simulating how someone with a military background would fight. But we both still wanted to highlight his skills in Taekwondo, considering his background in the martial art and mine. She also wanted to complement his skill in Taekwondo with her knowledge of Karate and Krav Maga, so she went over various Karate and Krav Maga drills with him during training. Even though Zack was already an accomplished martial artist before he even shot the film, Diana trained him and his co-stars including Francisca Schisler, David Josh Lawrence, and Aramis Merlin for the various fight scenes in the film. These training sessions were invaluable, as they could take time to learn the choreography and practice each individual part of the fight. Zack and David practiced the final fight sequence several times across a couple weeks to be able to execute it without even thinking when we were shooting. The character of Marcus is an ex-Special Forces agent, as he's a former member of the fictitious Python unit that my brother and I created for the film. Naturally, given this background, it lent itself well to incorporate techniques from both Krav Maga and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu given their frequent use in military and police forces around the world. Krav Maga is a CQC system developed for the Israel Defense Forces. It has a huge array of useful and easy to execute disarms for guns, knives, and other weapons. In the case of Marcus, he comes across an opportunity where he can get the jump on his opponent and disarm his weapon. I actually taught Zack this very disarm, as I had seen it during the time I was training in Krav Maga. The concept of the disarm is relatively simple. You place one hand underneath the barrel while the other applies pressure on the wrist. By simultaneously pulling with one hand and pressing down with the other, the gun flips out of the aggressor's hand with hardly any strength. Krav Maga also boasts an excellent amount of self-defense techniques for common attacks, as well as a great variety of striking techniques. Its striking techniques are based primarily in boxing, as its creator Emil Lichtenfeld had a boxing background. But the style has absorbed strikes from other martial arts including Muay Thai. In the case of Marcus, he's fond of using either quick knee strikes to injure his opponent, as well as quick elbows to go for a knockout or for a strike. Although elbows and knees are present in Muay Thai, we're going to be grouping them with Krav Maga given the background of the stunt coordinator. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a martial art and combat sport that focuses on grappling and has a huge emphasis on fighting on the ground. It's based on the concept that a weaker person can successfully defend themselves against the bigger and stronger enemy using technique and leverage. The lineage of the art dates all the way back to Japanese Jiu Jitsu or Jiu Jitsu, which then led to Judo, which subsequently led to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is sometimes also plainly called Jiu Jitsu, but with a different spelling from its Japanese counterpart. I know it can be confusing. Jiu Jitsu has an excellent array of choke holds, and one of them is a classic rear naked choke. This technique is also seen in other arts such as Judo. In a standard rear naked choke, or Hada Kajime, you press on the carotid arteries on the neck, 
thereby preventing blood flow to the head, which causes your opponent to pass out. In Marcus's case, he slightly modifies the technique by first using the knife to intimidate his target and then switches over to a more proper version of the technique. He uses a rear naked choke in other instances in the movie, but I don't want to spoil those plot points for you guys. In this instance, in order to be able to execute the technique, he performed a low kick on his opponent's leg, right behind the knee, causing it to buckle immediately. This is frequently seen in jujitsu as it helps you secure the hold even when the guy is taller than you. There are plenty of blocking techniques in jujitsu as it's extremely common to block a strike and then go into your jujitsu technique. One of those blocks is this one right here. What you do is raise your arm as if you're answering your phone and then block the incoming attack. It's a common block seen in various martial arts including jujitsu, muay thai, and krav maga. Sometimes you do end up on the floor in a fight and that's where jujitsu really shines. Note right here how although his attacker does have the advantage in the mount position and being able to wail on him with various strikes, Marcus keeps his arms up to block his attacks and his legs up in a good guarding position. Marcus soon sees his opportunity due to an overextended punch, creating enough leeway for him to be able to shift his hips out and change his leg positioning. This seriously constricts his opponent's movement as he's ideally going for an armbar. But since his opponent is resisting the armbar and shifting his weight back, it's forcing Marcus to transition. So Marcus takes advantage of the fact that he already has his arm and his opponent is so focused on countering the armbar by any means necessary that when he sees his opening, Marcus switches up the hold by using his legs to trap his opponent's arm right up against his neck. This is a devastating variation of the triangle choke hold. The technique constricts the blood flow from the carotid arteries to the brain. All you need to do is apply enough pressure and your opponent will pass out in very little time. A big part of martial arts featuring throws and holds, such as jujitsu or even Aikido, is learning how to fall properly. Falling correctly will prevent serious injury to your head and other parts of your body. Check out how Marcus was thrown here. Notice how as he was falling, he tucked his head in and positioned his arm into a slight curve, forming a sort of protective cage right around his head. In this way, he's able to safely roll out of the throw using his shoulder and avoid any injury. This role is known as an ukemi, and it's an essential part of being a skilled fighter. In this instance, Marcus's opponent has him in a good hold and Marcus opts to counterattack it by using a move that is somewhat common to see in MMA matches with fighters who have a wrestling background. If a guy is refusing to open his guard for you to pass, then you can opt to slam the guy. Note that this kind of maneuver isn't seen much in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but considering Marcus's wrestling background, he will go for the technique that will allow him to get out as quick as possible from that situation, and that is to go for the slam. Expanding on his wrestling background, notice how Marcus tries to tackle his enemy. In wrestling, what Marcus is doing here is known as shooting in for a double leg takedown. To get a little technical here, in a normal wrestling match, it's required that one of your knees must be on the ground in order to slam your opponent to the mat with control. However, since we're dealing with a street fight and not a wrestling match, Marcus opted to just go in a little higher than you normally would, to be as aggressive as possible. It could even be considered more of a spear. Ideally, Marcus wanted to slam the guy down on the ground. However, his enemy was too strong for this technique and stuffed the takedown. Marcus was therefore unable to complete the double leg takedown, a technique we've analyzed before that's seen in several fighting styles, including wrestling and jujitsu. As mentioned earlier, an important part of Marcus's fighting style is his Taekwondo background. Taekwondo is a Korean martial art characterized by its emphasis on various kicking techniques, and Marcus demonstrates several of them. Let's take a closer look at some of these kicks. The spinning hook kick, or Dui Huri Ochagi, is an extremely powerful kick capable of knocking out opponents in one hit. There are several layers to its effectiveness, including how your whole body essentially acts like a pendulum in delivering the kick. But the kick can always be hidden behind additional spins or feints by twisting your body by lifting your knee and then placing it down, which is exactly what Marcus does in this situation. He spins multiple times to cover some distance and then launches the kick at the last second. The reason why this sort of spinning is frequently seen in Olympic style Taekwondo matches is that you never know when or if a kick will shoot out at the end, and it's a great way to confuse your opponent and get closer to him. The kick that gets the slow motion treatment in the film is known as a tornado kick. It's probably one of the most popular kicks in MMA tournaments due to its deceitful nature. Very much in the same way as we just saw with the spinning hook kick, the kick flies out of nowhere. It's accomplished by essentially spinning in place with one leg and then using that very same leg to jump in the air to kick your opponent. Note that the jump can be extremely vertical or horizontal, or just a short barely there hop as well. It all depends on the situation. Marcus's biggest kicking technique is a jump spin back kick. You execute it by jumping, twisting yourself in midair, and then, using the same leg you used to jump, deliver a back kick. 
It's my favorite kick in Taekwondo, and it's the reason why I used this very same technique in my Solid Snake vs Sam Fisher short and decided to include it in Soul Hunters with Marcus as well. Karate is a Japanese martial art that predates Taekwondo that features several of the same techniques but has more of an emphasis in upper body techniques and does not have the same variety of kicks that Taekwondo has. It is in Karate where we see classic strikes such as the famous knife hand strike or as it's more colloquially known, the karate chop. Marcus executes this move in the film, as well as his side elbow, which is also featured in other martial arts, but is more closely associated with karate. He also does a spinning back fist. Once again, this technique is seen in other martial arts, but is a mainstay in karate. A great example of the Shotokan karate on display lies right here with this particular punch. In karate, as well as in taekwondo, you're trained to punch by chambering your punches at your waist. In other words, as your punch shoots from your waist and turns in midair, your other hand is retreating towards your hip, preparing for your next punch. But karate is not all about striking, as there are several blocks as well, and many of them are shared with taekwondo. Marcus frequently defends himself against various hits with a variety of karate blocks. And fun fact, this sequence right here was inspired by a karate drill that Diana learned during her training. Moving on to Marcus's punching technique, it would be remiss for him not to use his upper body strength, and that's why he resorts to using boxing technique for several of his punches. In boxing, it's all about using the torque of your body to create the strongest punches possible. Marcus couldn't be in special forces if he didn't know how to use firearms, and that's why he's well versed in using them. For this skill, we turn to combat shooting. As you've seen before, combat shooting is very similar to action shooting and that competitors go from target to target trying to be as accurate as possible. The United States Marine Corps uses their stages as ways to train for things like long range accuracy, movement, and transitioning between guns. So in conclusion, how many fighting styles does Marcus know in Soul Hunters? They are Krav Maga, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Wrestling, Taekwondo, Shotokan Karate, Boxing, and Combat Shooting for a grand total of seven fighting styles. I'd like to thank each one of my Patreon members as their contribution helped in the making of this video. If you'd like to contribute and appear in the credits in the future, my Patreon page is Godzilla Rex and it's in the description below. What did you think of Soul Hunters? What other characters should I analyze next? Let me know in the comments below, subscribe for more awesome videos, and see you next time.